our call to celebration. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. The Lord God has told us what is right and what he demands. See that justice is done. Let mercy be your first concern and humbly obey your God. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. If you would, join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, this morning we stand before you thankful. Thankful for the breath of life, for your love, mercy, and grace. Thankful that you are our way. You are our truth and that life to the fullest is found in you. Lord God, you have told us what is right and what you demand of each one of us. May we all see that justice is done, that we are chiefly concerned with mercy, and we live in humble obedience to you, Father God. On this beautiful morning and every morning you give us, may we offer our lives as living sacrifices to you, Father as our true and proper worship. God, help us to not conform to the world, but rather begin to transform and renew our minds so we may be able to know your good, pleasing, and perfect will for our lives. Thank you for all who share in this special time and in this special place right now, and all that it represents to so many. We pray these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated.
Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Let's try that one more time. Good morning, everyone. That is where we should be. It's graduation. For those who don't know me, I am Tom Mitchell, and I'm humbled to be the president of Kentucky Wesleyan College. This is one of the most exciting days of my year. It's the most exciting day of our senior students' lives. And I cannot tell, them, I cannot tell you students how proud we are of each and every one of you to have made this trek. And I do want to ask you, when you were first stepping onto campus, did you see that light at the end of the tunnel, that day of graduation? I'm, I'm assuming most of you saw it very dimly. And last night, I was asking questions of all of our seniors. How long does it seem since you've now stepped onto that campus? It's been about a week. Time flies. You've done an incredible amount in between that time that you stepped onto campus as, as first year students and the time you get to now walk across the stage. I want you to stand up, please. Just the students. <laughs> so Rock is proud. Whatever happens after today, and I, we, we know you're going to do wonderful things, but remember today, for the special occasion that it is, and for everybody that's around you, I want, before you sit down, take a look around you, students, please, take a look around. We've got close to a thousand people in this room, and they are all here because of you. They are all here to support you. They are all here because they are so proud to have you as part of their lives. Remember that as you go forward. Nobody does anything alone. We all have to have our support systems. You will be part of a support system. You will need a support system. But keep in mind all those hidden behind you who have helped you along the way, and be that person when you can. Sit down, please. Albert Einstein defined the measure of intelligence as the ability to change. He also defined the definition of insanity as trying the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Your time at Kentucky Wesleyan College dealt with a little change. You entered in a fairly normal year. Four years of college, get a degree, start your career, someday retire, house, boat, everything. And then, we had this COVID thing. So you began your time on campus, then you were off campus. Then you were on campus. Then you were on, you were on campus, but locked in your rooms. Then you were on campus again. And during that time, you were masked. Not masked. Masked. Not masked. And then hiding because you didn't want to be masked. And that, that, that isn't even counting what you had to do within your classrooms, within everywhere else. One of the things that you, because of what you have gone through, the special occasion of what you have gone through, on one side you have realized you don't really have complete control of your lives. Events will happen. You will plan. You will plan everything the best you can. Now you do it on your phone, you used to do it on paper calendars, and life will intervene. But what you've shown is that you have the ability to adapt so well. COVID-19 is passing. Owensboro Health just stated they have zero COVID cases for the first time since the pandemic began. This will pass. A warning. Other things will come around. Be ready for change. Embrace the change. I always like to cite Charles Duell in 1889. He was a director of the United States Patent Office. And he stated in 1889 that the patent office should close. So everything that can be invented has been invented. Now, most of you laugh when we talk about the early 2000s and all the change that has occurred since the early 2000s. This was 1889 they were going to close the patent office. Change happens. It will keep going. 
In 1980, the World Wide Web was a global, global phenomenon, all anybody could talk about. They had almost a thousand devices attached to the World Wide Web. Think about that. Almost a thousand. That means one person in this room had no chance of having anything connected. In 2000, most of you were born in 2000, 360 million devices. Wonderful increase, correct? That's two-thirds of those people on Facebook right now. That was the entirety globally of everything connected to the, to the Internet. In 2020, only 20 years later, so in 1980 you had 1,000, in, in 2000 you had 360 million, in 2020 you had 10 billion devices connected. In 2030, they project, they pro, uh, project 30 billion will be connected. It's going to continue to change. You laugh at anybody over 50 on how we use technology. Everybody under 10 is laughing at you. <laughs> it's going to continue to change. And it's going to be wonderful, and it's going to be fun, and you have to embrace it. By 2030, they estimate 800 million jobs will revert to automated devices. Those are jobs that will be taken away from people. Probably not jobs you would want, but, but there are jobs that would have been taken away from people, so what do we do? So not only is technology changing, but how many of you watch the news? It's like watching Wide World of Wrestling lately. If you Google political divide in the United States of America, you get 1,550,000,000 hits in one-tenth of a second. And if you read through those hits, not even opening up, just reading the headlines. They're not friendly. How many of you posted to social media and got negative backlash? You're trying to be nice, you're trying to put something out, maybe you're doing a TikTok, you're dancing by the fountain, and somebody's got to ruin your day. We have these huge political divides. They have rules. Since some of you are going to be going home, you need to be aware of these rules. They have rules for how you should engage your family members when discussing politics. Now, when I was growing up, we had food fights. It had nothing to do with politics. My brother had a stronger arm than me. He usually won. But rules, these political divides. Eleanor Roosevelt once was quoted as saying, it is not only important, but mentally invigorating to discuss political matters with people whose opinions differ radically from one's own. For the same reason, I believe it is a sound idea to attend not only the meetings of one's own party, but of the opposition. Find out what people are saying. Find out what people are thinking, what they believe. It's an invaluable check on your own ideas. That is more true today than at any other time. And I know you've grown up in an era where you don't do that, but please start. The next generation is really up to you and your actions and your changes and what you do. Plato, I'm going to go way back in history. Plato stated, one of the penalties for refusing to participate in politics is that you end up being governed by your inferiors. If you don't vote, I might get elected somewhere. You don't want that. Be involved, be ready for change, have fun. So why am I telling you this? The beauty of where you are right now is your generation has been one of the most active since the late 1960s. You've risen up to, to make those difficult conversations. I've seen this on campus. We've had marches. We've had gatherings, they've all been conducted in very collegial manners. I've been so proud of everybody who's been a part of those actions. But it's not just our campus, you've been wonderful, but it's your generation nationally. You're getting involved in so much more at a much higher moral and ethical level than my generation. And I'm proud of you for that. Stay there, stay what you're doing. And in terms of technology, your liberal arts degree has provided you the opportunity to develop strengths in all the different areas. 
How many of you turned in a research paper four days ago? Bloodshot eyes, way too caffeinated, stumbling through Winchester, probably ran into the new mascot we have, we have outside. You didn't know that you would ever finish that. You didn't have an answer when you started it. And your professor's kind of like, yeah, it's hard, isn't it? You had to figure it out. What a great way to learn how to think open-mindedly, to think critically, and to think outside the box. But you can't think outside the box until you know what's inside the box. And that's what your professors have taught you as well. You have all of those tools. Most of you have been involved in internships or athletics or academic clubs or choir or band. You've all done outside activities. You've all been placed in a leadership role, somewhat uncomfortable in the beginning. But now you're it just something that you do naturally. You are so well prepared. We are so proud of you. I will tell you, though, that being prepared is only part of it. You have to want to be active. You have to want to be part of the solution. Martin Dempsey, who over the course of his career, he's a retired military leader, over the course of his career in, in the military and in Washington, D.C., stated that you cannot get by by just being a spectator. You have to contribute, and you always have to be prepared. That is my hope for you, that you will want to contribute, that you will always be prepared. So today, you're going to walk across the stage. You're going to get your degree. You're going to leave the nest, so to speak, or the panther's den. You will always be a panther. You will always be part of KWC. So I hope that you will continue to follow the Wesleyan way. Do everything with honor. And by that, what I'm hoping is to take responsibility. Take responsibility for your life, for your actions, and don't blame others. You're going to have trials. You're going to have travails. You're going to have wonderful breakthroughs. You're going to have failures. Keep going forward with honor. Take responsibility. Support each other. As I mentioned before, all of you have been supported, and all of you have supported others, and that will always continue. That does not end when you get your degree. And part of supporting each other, as I mentioned with honors, don't blame others, but part of supporting each other is don't blame yourself. All that does is bring negativity. Learn from what you've done and move on. Guilt is not healthy. Drop it. We compete with integrity. Don't let rejection create self-doubt. One of the best stories I love is, is, is the founder of Starbucks. How many of you have had Starbucks? Uh, caffeinates the entire campus. People drive 200 miles to get Starbucks. When trying to begin his company, he was rejected by 217 of his 242 investor outreaches. Nobody would give him money. So it's not a matter of how you accomplish a goal, but how. Do so with integrity. People are going to tell you no. People are going to tell you you're not good enough. Inside, laugh at them. Keep going. You know you're good enough. You're here. You've already accomplished so much. The final Wesleyan way, love each other. So simple, isn't it? Just love each other. You don't always have to agree, but just love each other. If you can follow those four rules, you will go further than you ever thought. Not further than we think you can go. We, we know what you can do. You'll go further than what you ever thought. So change is inevitable, almost always. Robert Gallagher says change is inevitable, except from a vending machine. <laughs> Keep that in mind. When you are finished changing, that is when you are truly finished. My hope is that you are never truly finished. Always keep changing. Always look forward to what's around that corner. Always hope to open that door, peek through that window. The life, the, 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 this is your life. The next generation is entirely up to you. Embrace it, have fun, and show us that we were moving too slowly. 
This is your day. Congratulations again. I want to introduce a person who, for most students, works very much behind the scenes, but is extremely important to the history, the present, and the future of Kentucky Wesleyan College. We are so proud to have her as chair of our Board of Trustees. Please help me welcome Ms. Sherry Felposh to the podium. Dr. Mitzel, it's great to be here this morning. Dear honored graduates, distinguished faculty, President Mitzel, trustees, family, friends, and guests, I bring you greetings from the Kentucky Wesleyan College Board of Trustees. Many of them are here today to help support you as graduates of this college, and we're, we want to welcome them. But you have a spectacular achievement that is being supported today, your graduation. I welcome you as a fellow graduate of Kentucky Wesleyan College and hope you will be a proud and dedicated alum to your school. Please never forget this moment. Carry with you the connections you have made at this place and take them into your work life and your career and your family as you go forward throughout your life. I want to extend my sincere congratulations to you and know that Kentucky Wesleyan and the Board of Trustees support you in every way possible, and we all hope the best for you as you go forward from this place. Congratulations. It is now my sincere pleasure to introduce to you our commencement speaker, Mr. Hugh Hayden is the founder and former president of the Owensboro-based Kentucky Bioprocessing Incorporated. Kentucky Bioprocessing is now known as K-Bio, and it is a world leader in the development and production of biopharmaceuticals using plants as the host for expression of a recombinant proteins. That's a very complicated way of saying that they've used tobacco-based products to create some medical inventions and other things that have helped uh, throughout the world. Through Mr. Hayden's leadership, KBio built a global network with collaborations in Europe, Africa, Asia, and the United States, all focused on the deployment of plant-based protein expression systems to address gaps in the global pharmaceutical production system. His career also included almost 10 years as Commissioner of the Economic Development for the Commonwealth of Kentucky, where he was responsible for negotiation of over $2 billion in financing transactions, as well as creation and implementation of several very successful and award-winning programs aimed at gro growing Kentucky's economy. Mr. Hayden spent a lot of time in Owensboro. He now lives in Louisville. He's a native of Springfield, Kentucky, and is a graduate of the University of Kentucky. Please help me welcome to the podium Mr. Hugh Hayden. Two things that always occur to people whenever someone like me stands up uh, at a podium to speak at a public event. First question they have is, who is this person? Well, I've just been given a very nice introduction that hopefully sheds a little light on that and maybe my comments will tell you a little bit more about me. But the second and much more important question that people have is how long is this guy going to talk? I can't give you an exact answer to that, but I will share an outline of my comments that might also serve as a bit of advice for any public speaking that you might be called upon to do at some point in your career. You may have heard this before, but I learned it very early in my career. There are three rules of public speaking. First, you tell the audience what you're going to tell them. Second, you then tell them. And third, you then tell them what you told them. So using that template as a guide, here's my message to you here today. Graduates, congratulations on your achievement. 
and congratulations on your decision to attend this outstanding institution and to pursue a liberal arts degree. Now that endorsement of liberal arts may not seem like a controversial statement, but I can tell you from my experience leading the State Workforce Investment Board that there is increasing public sector emphasis, encouragement, and even incentives for students to pursue a much more specialized educational options. And to be very clear, those are very honorable and essential courses of study and career paths. My point is simply that the world needs people with highly specialized education and skills, but it also needs people whose academic experience focused on educating the whole person. Whether you realize it or not, the liberal arts education that you've received from this wonderful institution has blessed you by exposing you to new cultures and ideas, the pleasures of literature, music, and art, and a sense of your ethical responsibility to make a contribution to making your community and the world a better place. It's also empowered you with essential life and career skills, like the ability to listen effectively, to think critically, to analyze a problem, and to communicate clearly. Your liberal arts education has developed your leadership skills and very importantly, as Dr. Mitzel indicated, to adapt in a rapidly changing world. Let's use my own case as an example. After leaving college with my own liberal arts experience, the first part of my career was spent working in economic development, first in a smaller town, then here in Owensboro, and ultimately with responsibility for the entire state of Kentucky. Even though the scale was different at each one of those stops, the job was pretty much the same. But if you did an analysis of my academic experience, you'd see nothing that suggested an ability to understand, develop, and negotiate complex financial packages, identify and develop real estate, conduct public communications, or interact with top-level business and government leaders. But what you would miss if you only looked at the names of the classes that I took is the totality of the liberal arts experience and the baseline understanding of processes and the confidence that a liberal arts background gave me to engage and prosper in these activities. In short, your liberal arts education will allow you to succeed doing things that you never imagined and very possibly have no specific training for. On this point, if my economic development experience doesn't convince you, let me tell you a quick story about how a guy who failed high school biology came to be in charge of a pretty good sized company whose entire business was based on the use of biology. Of course, I'm talking about KBP or Kentucky Bioprocessing, and I did, in fact, fail high school biology. Now, in my defense, it was AP biology and I only took the class as an elective because I was trying to keep the competition from sitting next to my girlfriend. <laughs> and for the record, I not only, not only failed the class, I failed in my reason for taking the class. <laughs> so so how did that guy become the CEO of an innovative biotechnology company? On that question, I again credit my liberal arts background. Back in late 2005, I was working with a group of friends to use my economic development experience to arrange financing for what became KBP. With that financing arranged, I assumed that my active role in running the company was finished. But you see, one of the friends who was involved in that project, Billy Joe Miles, knew that for the company to succeed, it would require leadership that could communicate effectively with very diverse groups, could see the world in 360 degrees, would take a broad view of the scientific potential, could adjust and navigate to find a place for a new technology in a very rapidly changing world, and felt a commitment to use the science not only to support the business, but to support the important role that the business could play in helping people. Billy Joe realized that while the company would need accomplished scientists, 
it would be a person with a liberal arts background who would be best suited to lead it. And I was lucky enough to be standing there. Now you can take it from a guy who couldn't pass a high school class and somehow became a biotech CEO. There's always something to learn. Speaking of constantly learning lessons, it wouldn't be a graduation speech without a few pieces of advice. And these are five lessons that I've learned throughout my career and all things that I've referenced in my prior comments. There are also things that your liberal arts education has you extremely well prepared for. So here goes. Dr. Mitzel talked about change. I will repeat that. Change is inevitable. Roll with it. I jumped from a career in economic development into a biotech world where I had absolutely no background or experience. The world is moving faster than ever. Opportunity can emerge from very unexpected places. Don't be afraid to embrace the change and the opportunity. Number two, be an active and careful listener while also carefully and closely observing the world around you. Your education didn't end today, and at best, this is the end of the beginning. And it's amazing what you can learn just by paying attention. How did I manage to survive and thrive in that biotech world? By listening carefully and paying very close, to attention, very close attention to people and situations. If your eyes and ears are open, Every situation, every encounter becomes a lesson. Number three, and closely related to number two, it, this may sound counterintuitive, but you do not want to be the smartest person in the room. You've heard something similar from your parents when they tried to guide you to or away from a group of friends. At KBP, I didn't have to know how to design a DNA sequence because I knew people who knew how to design DNA sequences. You won't make a more important career decision than surrounding yourself with good, smart people. Number four, find something that's bigger than yourself to commit yourself to. It might be a nonprofit, it might be your family, and it might be different things at different points in your life. But nothing will give you more satisfaction while also keeping you properly grounded than to know that you are doing something, contributing something beyond simply earning a paycheck. Number five, find a mentor. Without Billy Joe, I'm never at KBP. The longer I'm around, the more I've come to appreciate that there are people who have experiences, knowledge, and perspectives that are not only invaluable for your career, but also make you a wiser person. And by the way, as your own career advances, you should also recognize the benefits that you will gain by becoming that mentor to someone else. Trustees, Dr. Mitzel, faculty and staff, thank you for having me here today. I also want to recognize my beautiful wife, Kim, who's here with me. As I reflect, I'm certain that everything about that failed biology class worked out really well for me. In closing, I again offer my congratulations to the graduates, as well as those parents and others who made your experience here at Kentucky Wesleyan possible. As you go forward, your liberal arts education will serve you like a Swiss Army knife. No matter the situation that you encounter, when you open it, there'll be a tool in there that will help you. Thank you. One of the items that we get a chance to do as an institution of higher education is to recognize those people who have contributed so much to their community, to the college, and to the broader good. And today, we get the chance to celebrate two of those people, and we will do that 
now, and let me read the first citation. It's Kentucky Wesleyan College, Owensboro, Kentucky. Know all persons by these presents that the faculty and board of trustees of Kentucky Wesleyan College have conferred upon Hugh Hayden the degree of honorary doctorate of humane letters with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. Witness the seal of the college and the signatures of its duly authorized officers hereto affixed April 29th, 2022. You've already heard about Hugh's background. You've already gotten to listen to his, his wonderful insight and guidance. So we would like to award him the honorary degree of humane. Our second degree, as I read through the citation, Kentucky Wesleyan College, Owensboro, Kentucky, know all persons by these presents that the faculty and the Board of Trustees of Kentucky Wesleyan College have conferred upon Amy Melton Schutt the degree of honorary doctorate of humane letters with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. Witness the seal of the college and the signatures of its duly authorized officers hereto affixed April 29, 2022. Before we bring Dr. Shoot up, I'd like to give a little bit of background as to why she is such a wonderful candidate for this award. So Dr. Amy Melton Shoot is Assistant Superintendent of Davis County Public Schools. She has helped develop a strong team of student support coordinators, district social workers, and school support coordinators all working together to nurture student success. Her work within the wider region is equally impressive. She is a vigorous advocate for mental health and exp expedited the near doubling of mental health services in DCPS schools while hosting and facilitating a variety of sponsored workshops, group trainings, and conferences for hundreds of educators throughout the region. Dr. Shoup was the lead organizer and the driving force behind hashtag Be Kind DCPS, a district-wide effort to enhance the role of compassionate care, empathy, and kindness. As head of the interinstitutional agreements, Dr. Shoup led transformative change. Partnerships with the University of Kentucky's Center for Trauma, University of Louisville's Academic and Behavior Response Program, and Western Kentucky University's School of Social Work, all led by Dr. Shute, have greatly enhanced the district's supportive capabilities. She has been a significant collaborator, strong partner, and a sincere friend to the faculty, staff, and students of Kentucky Wesleyan College for many years. Her service to the college through the Education Advisory Committee has allowed Kentucky Wesleyan Teacher Education Program to adapt its curriculum its methods and, ped and pedagogy to meet the evolving needs of Davis County. We have long appreciated her contributions, and today we are here to help celebrate her amazing career. Thank you both so very much, and congratulations. Good morning. Graduates are traditionally recognized for their academic achievements. Summa cum laude refers to students who have attained grade point averages of 
three point nine to four point zero. Magna cum laude refers to students who have attained a grade point average three point seven to three point eight nine nine. And cum laude refers to students who have attained a grade point average 3.5 to 3.699. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts please rise? <clears throat> President Mitzel, I present to you the candidates for Bachelor of Arts degrees. They have been approved by the faculty and board of trustees. I present them to you so you may confer the degrees. By the authority granted to me by the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the Board of Trustees of Kentucky Wesleyan College, I hereby confer upon each of you the Bachelor of Arts degree to which you are entitled with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. <clears throat> Madeline Ray Borman. Clay Quentin Brown. Andrew James Burke. Kayla L. Butler. <laughs> Kevin Heron. Hunter Carson Jones. Zachary Michael Casey. <laughs> Matthew Joseph Market. <laughs> Matthew David Lee Morris. Eric Charles Scheidegger. Kobe Elizabeth Shrewsbury. Turner Cruz Vaughn. Alexis Aline Wilkerson. <laughs> Cheyenne Gail Worthington. The candidate for a Bachelor of Music Education, please rise. <laughs> President Mitzel, I present to you the candidate for Bachelor of Music Education. They've been approved by the faculty and board of trustees. I present them to you so you may confer the degree. By the authority granted to me by the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the board of trustees of Kentucky Wesleyan College, I hereby confer upon you the Bachelor of Music Education degree to which you are entitled with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto.
Megan Elizabeth Crawford. Candidates for Bachelor of Science, please rise. <laughs> President Mitzel, I present to you the candidates for Bachelor of Science degrees. They have been approved by the faculty and board of trustees. I present them to you so you may confer the degrees. By the authority granted to me by the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the board of trustees of Kentucky Wesleyan College, I hereby confer upon each of you the Bachelor of Science degrees to which you are entitled, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Kaylee Adams. <laughs> Haley Claire Ammons. <laughs> Brian Scott Basham. Wyatt Battle. Michaela Hui Benson. Josiah Scott Bergren. Cameron Lee Blandford. <laughs> Devin Chervey Bledsoe. <laughs> Shelby Boone. William Lane Boltinghouse. Anna Elizabeth Bolin. Nathan Boyle. Jacob Bouguet. <laughs> Samantha Ann Bugno. <laughs> Tessa Page Berger. Colton William Carnes. <laughs> Isaiah Bravo Callalang. <laughs> Lionel T. Campbell III. Adon Cano Gondria. Gracie Page Cart. Olivia Ann Clements.
Dalen Rashawn Kofer. Austin William Cook. Leah Elizabeth Cravens. <laughs> Jeremy K. Degree. <laughs> Madeline Ann Dunlop. Christopher Flick. Shamar Jamont Foster. Ashton Nicole France. Michael Thomas Gardner. <laughs> Rachel Elizabeth Glenn. <laughs> Abby Goodall. Aaron Thomas Godey. Yeah. Chauncey St. John Greer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard Joseph Grenier III. Cameron Danielle Hamilton. Cassandra K. Hancock. Jacob Hunter Harley. Nathan Craig Hayes. Ryan Wrigley Hodges. Teddy Jamison Hurley. Emma Riley Johnson. <laughs> Ava Elizabeth Joyner. <laughs> Veronica Faith Kamer. Ariel Michaela Kennedy. Do it. I, I thought you would. Shedrick Keandre Kirk. <laughs> Taylor Drake Clues. Jennifer Ann Kuntzman Hetty. <laughs> 
Angelique Claire Lazier. Jasmine Elise Logston. Sydney Ray Logston. Madison Brooke Lowe. Michaela Nicole Lowe Sykes. Haley Nicole McGuire. Lexi Marie Martin. Reese Mayfield. Courtney Brooke McCarthy. Charles Benton McGill. Mackenzie Ann Melton. Dallas Cameron Miles. Nicole Gwendolyn Miller. Lacey Marie Mills. Austin Tyler Minton. Brooklyn Ruby Moore Lindsay. Evan Keith Morton. Lucy Lynn Morton. Jeremy Preston Morrell. Tyreek James Norwood. Nicholas S. Ornelas. Jasmine Nicole Wynn Owen. Michaela Nicole Payne. Lauren Cecilia Petrosky. <laughs> Kylie Phillips. <laughs> Sydney Joe Rager. Jessica Faith Rice. <laughs> Leah Joy Richardson. <laughs> Rachel Suzanne Richardson. Elizabeth Ann Richardson. (laughs) 
Reagan Riggs. Shannon Nicole Rubel. Jaquan Damon Keon Roberts. Austin Quinn Amadeus Schultz. Aaron Marie Sexsmith. Chandler Thomas Sylvie. Haley Dean Stevens. Carrie Mackenzie Stewart. Joseph Seth Taylor. Brooklyn Janine Thompson. Joshua Thompson. <laughs> Abigail Brooke Tivitt. <laughs> Charles Leroy Tooley. Felicia Lynn Velada. <laughs> Madison Taylor Vowles. <laughs> Vincent James Watley Jr. Brittany Eileen Wicker. <laughs> Keith Adam Williams. <laughs> Zachary Williams. Jake Willis. So <laughs> Jalen Dwayne Wilson. <laughs> Jamil Naeem Wilson. Ramon Lamont Wilson. <laughs> Alyssa Montana Zombert. Congratulations once again to all of you. Let's give another round of applause. And now it is my hope 
that you will join us for the alma mater, after which our Student Government Association President Evan Morton will ring the Millersburg bell to conclude the 154th commencement exercise. So, will the Kentucky Wesleyan singers please come forward to lead us in the singing of our alma mater? Can everybody please stand? If you would, join me in our benediction. Father, as we leave this place, may we live transformational lives. Lives that glorify you in all we say and do, so others may come to know you. May we live transformational lives that foster justice, mercy, and obedience. Obedience to your will and not ours. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you his holy peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. <laughs>